And we start with breaking news tonight out of Springfield, where an Amber Alert has been issued for an 11 year old girl. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. I'm Chris Pisano and I'm Beth Ward. There is a large police presence on Amherst Street. That's where we find Western Mass News reporter James Lobos, who joins us now live with the latest developments. James, what can you tell us? Well, Chris and Beth, there's definitely a lot going on, but just to give some perspective, I'm standing at the corner of Lafayette and Amherst Street. That home in the corner is actually where the family lives. We're going to, of course, respect them during this difficult time. We don't want to get too close, but we can hear the screaming. We can hear the crying. A lot of frustrations. We just keep hearing the word possible abduction, and I want to go ahead and show you the picture of the girl that we are looking for. Her name is 11-year-old Charlotte Machia. She was last seen in this area, again, Lafayette and Amherst Street at about 1.30 this afternoon. She was returning home from the Hamden Charter School. This is, again, being treated as a possible abduction, and we do have a picture of the car. I believe we've shown you two pictures of Charlotte now, but I want to go ahead and show you the picture of the car that they are looking for. It is a blue or dark Honda, and that car has dark tinted windows. Police are asking anyone, and of course the family is asking anyone with information, if you've seen Charlotte or if you've seen this car, to please contact police. I was talking to a neighbor here, and the concern is just how close this area is to 291, so they are asking everyone to be on alert. That is why that Amber alert got pushed out. But again, if we can go ahead and show that picture of Charlotte again. 11 year old Charlotte Machia of Springfield last seen in the area of Lafayette and Amherst Street and again back live here. If we could come back live again, the detectives are still here. We're actually following around uh, one of the undercover cars and they have that picture on full screen on their laptops of that car that they're looking for. But again, anyone with information is asked to contact police at this time. That's what we know for now. We're live in Springfield. James Villalobos, Western Mass News. We continue following breaking news tonight in Springfield where an Amber Alert has been issued for an 11 year old girl and good evening. I'm Beth Ward and I'm Chris Pisano. The possible abduction happening this afternoon around 1:30. Police are all along Amherst Street again in Springfield where the girl was last seen and that's where we find Western Mass News reporter James Villalobos who joins us live with the very latest developments. James. Well, Chris and Beth, this is a developing situation, but we are working on finding out new information. What I can tell you, I'm standing at the corner of Amherst Street and Lafayette Street. Right here, the corner behind me is actually where she lives. You can hear the family out here crying. They're definitely desperate for her to come home. This is taking place in the Hill McKnight neighborhood. This is not too far away from 291, and that is adding concerns as to where 11-year-old Catherine Machia may be. We are working on uh, confirming the pronunciation of her last name, but if we can, let's go ahead and show you the picture of her. She is four foot tall and she weighs 60 pounds. Again, uh, her name is Charlotte. She was on her way home from school. My uh, colleague Lindsay Kane will actually have more information on that coming up or directly after me. But again, um, I was actually talking to a Springfield police source and they are asking anyone with any cameras on their house to please get in contact with them. We do have a picture of the car. If we can go ahead and show that picture now of the suspected car. It is a dark blue Honda believed to be Honda Civic. Again, if you have seen this car, you are asked to contact police and just within the last hour and a half that we've been standing out here. We have seen a number of neighbors coming out here. We actually spoke to some to get their reaction to what's going on right here in their neighborhood. It's shocking. I mean, you never think stuff like that would happen in your neighborhood, but it happens all the time everywhere, I guess. And if we can again take that picture again of the car that they are looking for, I just want to reiterate, it is an older dark blue Honda, possibly a Civic with tinted windows. There is no front plate and police tell us that it has distinctive rims. The car may have been being driven by a white or light skinned female. And again, you are seeing the picture of that car now on your screen. Now, Western Mass News will continue to remain here on scene. Again, there is an Amber Alert now. The state police are now involved as part of this investigation. There are still detectives here. We have seen marked and unmarked cruisers, but at this this point, what we're seeing a lot of is now friends and family beginning to arrive and comfort their family as they work to get more answers. For now, we're live in Springfield. James Villalobos, Western Mass News. We have team coverage of this possible abduction. Lindsey Kane is standing by, but first, let's head to Springfield where we find Western Mass News reporter James Villalobos. He's live with the latest developments. James? Well, Chris and Beth, this is all taking place in the Hill McKnight neighborhood. You can see behind me, we have just seen the number of cars that are beginning to arrive here and beginning to comfort this family as they continue to wait for answers. And just within the last few minutes, we may not be able to see it now, but if we pan on down Lafayette Street, what we're seeing is now we're seeing more police officers out here with flashlights. Again, you can't see them now. They're sort of out of frame at this point because of how dark it is. But I was actually just speaking to a neighbor who came up very emotional, saying that you used to think that this was a safe neighborhood. A lot of the neighbors tell me that they cannot believe this is happening. You see this on the news 
elsewhere, but to have it happening right here in the neighborhood, a lot of people are just very, uh, very upset about that. We can hear the family getting very upset. They've actually asked the media to stay away. We will, of course, respect that as they continue to grieve and hopefully find answers. But let's actually show you some new video that we Western Mass News just received. You can see it. You can see Charlotte right there on the left side of your screen. She is walking into the frame. She is holding that white puffy jacket. And then we're going to fast forward a little bit. Again, this happened at around 1.30. And you can see that suspected car walking or driving its frame right there. That car is the one that police need your help finding. Again, that video is replaying. You can see that white puffy jacket that she is holding with those tan pants. And then moments later, as you will see, that car should be driving into the frame. Again, she is 11-year-old Charlotte Moshia. Charlotte is white and she has long brown hair. She is approximately four foot tall and 60 pounds. That is according to the information that we received from the state police. You are now looking at a picture of Charlotte. Again, if you have seen her, if you know her whereabouts, police are desperately asking you to call police and help give this family some comfort and closure and hopefully bring her back home. Now, you saw the picture of the car, you saw the video of the car, excuse me, now let's actually show you a picture of the car that they are looking for. State police tell us that the preliminary investigation suggests that a white or Hispanic male is walking behind Charlotte and forced her into the back of an older model, dark blue or black Honda, possibly a Civic with an unknown license plate. The investigation right now is in indicating that the car was being driven by a white or light-skinned Hispanic female. We are also told that it has tinted windows, there is no front plate, and that there are distinctive rims. Now back live here again, this happened near Princeton and Amherst Streets where she actually lived is behind me in this home. If you look in the distance, there's a number of people outside. That is the corner of Amherst and Lafayette Street. Again, a number of undercover cops that are here as well as marked cruisers. All they are looking for is to bring Charlotte back home to her family. And if you happen to know any information on where she may be and bring that closure, you are asked to contact police. The Amber Alert is also out. But again, the biggest concern right now that I've been told is just the proximity to 291. And also we showed you that video, but the police source tells me that if you happen to have any video from a ring camera or any camera on your home, you are asked to contact police for that as well. That's all we know for now. Be sure to stick with Western Mass News as we continue to work to gather more information on this situation. Live in Springfield, James Villalobos, Western Mass News. Let's go right to Springfield where we find Western Mass News reporter James Villalobos who is live with the latest developments. James, what's happening at this hour? Well, Beth, it's actually not just police. There's family here. There's family friends that are coming. You just see the amount of people behind me. We're seeing more cars beginning to arrive here. The family home where Charlotte actually lives is the corner of Lafayette and Amherst Street. This is in the Hill McKnight neighborhood, and I've been saying this with every live shot. The concern is just the proximity to 291, which is not too far away from here, and that is why the state police is involved as part of this investigation, and they put out that Amber Alert. But we actually have new video that you'll see on Western Mass News. Let's go ahead and show that where you actually see Charlotte walking home. You can see she's holding a white puffy coat right in the, she should be in about the middle of your screen now and then moments later you're going to see that car beginning to drive behind her that is the suspected car that police are looking for i actually spoke to the neighbor who recorded that video and it should be continuing to play uh very distraught she just wanted to help and that's why she immediately put this out very upset a number of neighbors have been coming out here upset at the situation hard to believe that something like this is happening right here in their neighborhood we talked to them earlier today let's play that sound Bring her back. Let her go someplace and let somebody know where you let her. Let her out. Yeah. Bring her back. Because it's poor Denise. I just feel sorry for her. Because if it was their kid, you want somebody to bring, exactly. you know, find their kid. So they need to just let this kid go. Yeah. Now on your screen is a picture of 11 year old Charlotte Moshe. Again, she is the one that is missing that police desperately need your help trying to find. She is white and she has long brown hair. She is approximately four foot tall and 60 pounds. And as you could see in that video that was playing earlier, she was holding a white puffy jacket in her hand. And I was actually speaking to the neighbor who recorded that video. And she says that she's also something to be mindful of. They're asking people to be on lookout for a backpack that may have been left behind because again, she was walking home from school. So I if you see the car, which actually let's go ahead and show you a picture of that car. If you see the car, if you see Charlotte or if you see a backpack, you're asked to contact police. But as for that car that you're now looking at on your screen, the preliminary investigation right now, the state police tell us is that a white or Hispanic female was walking behind Charlotte. She was forced into the back of an older model, dark blue or black Honda, possibly a Civic with an unknown plate. The investigation as of right now is indicating that the car was being driven by a white or light skinned Hispanic female 
now. That car, again, possible Civic, has tinted windows, no front plate, and it does have distinctive rims. Again, please take a close look at the car that is on your screen right now. If you see this at all, you are asked to contact police and now back live here again. We have been here since this first happened. Uh, it was first reported at 1.30 when it actually happened, but we've been standing out here and you could just see the family and friends coming through and you just hear the crying of this family. And again, they're asking you to help them bring closure and help bring Charlotte back home safe. Western Mass News is going to continue our team coverage on this possible abduction throughout the night. So be sure to stay tuned to Western Mass News 11 at 11. And of course, for any updates on the Western Mass News app. For now, we are live in Springfield. James Villalobos, Western Mass News. All the latest on this situation. Lindsey Kane standing by with more on how Charlotte was recovered. But first, James Villalobos joins us now live from the area where that abduction took place earlier today. James. Well, Chris, on Western Mass News 4, 5, and 6, we were live just a few feet away describing the scene out here as her family was screaming, crying, desperate for Charlotte to come back home. Now, tonight, you can see behind me outside of her home a much different scene. Everyone is back inside. We are now, and as you said, Chris, happy to report that she will finally be re reunited with her family after what police are calling a life or death situation. This is video of 11-year-old Charlotte Mosia walking home yesterday. You can see that she's followed by a blue Honda Civic. Again, this was yesterday, but police say the same vehicle and the driver inside is believed to have been involved in her abduction Wednesday. She was screaming, um, got in definitely unwillingly, and, and they left the area. What happened is I think every parent's worst nightmare um, as far as we can tell, and by all accounts, it was a stranger abduction. Springfield police holding a press conference less than an hour after she was found on the Mass Pike. Commissioner Clapperu tells Western Mass News it is largely in part because of civilian help that Charlotte was found. The tips coming in were amazing. Um, Texa tip lit up. People were calling the detective bureau. We put on extra staff in the detective bureau to field the tips coming in. People were out looking for this car. It was amazing. And police weren't going to rest until she was safe. We knew that time was of the essence. Um, this was not the kind of case that we could go home or we could hand over or we could say we'll continue this in the morning. Arrested was 24-year-old Miguel Rodriguez of Springfield. No mugshot has been provided yet, but he is in state police custody. Police say he has a criminal history, but wouldn't elaborate on his past or the charges he now faces. He was evil and he had her for nefarious reasons, so the worst can become of this. So the, it was a matter of finding her quickly and not giving him time. City officials reminding everyone this was a rare occurrence in the city. No family should have to go through this. Just think of your own family. And for someone to do this, a beautiful, intelligent, 11-year-old girl, innocent, innocent. Her condition looks fair to good. Um, not really sure how much she went through at this point. Um, but the parents have been notified, and as soon as we can, we will reunite uh, parent and child because I, I can't imagine what they were going through. Now, Chris, you may remember that earlier today that there were reports of a female driver being involved as part of this abduction. Police are now saying that that remains under investigation since only one man, as we reported, 24-year-old Miguel Rodriguez was taken into custody and was found with Charlotte. We actually just learned from a press conference at the state police that he was taken into custody at gunpoint and that he did not resist. I also asked the mayor and the commissioner during that press conference that what do you say to all the parents out there in the community that are concerned, watching the news, seeing what just unfolded today, and they are encouraging everyone to have that conversation with their kids about stranger danger. The mayor is also telling everyone that going forward to trust your guts and never hesitate to call police. We're live in Springfield, James Villalobos, Western Mass News. We turn now back to that breaking news. State police reporting that Charlotte Mosia has been found safe and sound after she was reportedly abducted this afternoon. And Western Mass News has been following that situation since the news broke. And we have another live report with those details from James Villalobos breaking down the very latest information. James. 
Well, Chris, talk about what a day it has been. This is truly a story of the community coming together for the Mosia family, desperate to find 11-year-old Charlotte Mosia, who was abducted as she was coming home from school. We were out here earlier today, and like I said earlier, the family that was just screaming and crying out here, the neighbors started coming out, emotional, saying that they could not believe that something like this was going on in their neighborhood. You hear about this all the time in national news, but to have this right here in Springfield in the Hill McKnight neighborhood is truly what just left so many people distraught. But again, we do have that happy ending that she she was thankfully found safe. We do have some video from when we first arrived and let's just remind you of the situation. Now this abduction reportedly happened at 1:30 at the corner in the area. I should say of Amherst and Princeton Street. As we know, Charlotte was walking home from school when this horrible thing happened. Thankfully, a neighbor security camera who lives directly across the street from her home was actually able to capture video yesterday. Now we have showed a lot of that video. That video is from yesterday, but the thing is the same vehicle that's following her in that video from yesterday yesterday is actually the suspect vehicle that was found today. We now do know that she was found on the Mass Pike in Auburn and Sturbridge of the Mass Pike heading eastbound. That is thanks to the mayor and the police commissioner. They say it is truly because of civilians coming forward. A lot of them I've heard I've spoken to that they said they went out on their own driving using their own gas to try and find this car and mayor or I'm sorry Commissioner Clapper actually said that during that press conference there were actually people that followed the car and took pictures of it and then that picture is what police actually used to have a better idea of the license plate and use a lot of the cameras in the area to be able to track that down. And when they did manage to track down that car, that is when they found 24-year-old Miguel Rodriguez with Charlotte. Charlotte was saved, and they say that she appeared to be unharmed. She, of course, has been taken to a hospital to be reevaluated or evaluated, I should say, to make sure that she is doing okay. Again, that car was a blue Honda Civic. That is the description we were reporting. And initial reports, there was that a female driver was involved. But again, police saying only Miguel Rivera, or Rodriguez, excuse me, at this time has been arrested. They are still investigating the fact that they say that a woman was possibly involved, but at this time, 24 year old Miguel Rodriguez is the only one being questioned. We do have the pictures of Charlotte again. This is the little girl, the 11 year old that the community rallied around and tried their best to get home. We do know that she was a student at the Hamden Charter School of Science. They actually put out a statement today or tonight, I should say, saying that they are relieved that she is found and that she is found safe. Of course, a lot of the concerns right now is, you know, parents all around Western Mass we're watching the story and they are reminding you guys to all parents to have the conversation with their kids about stranger danger. That way, nothing like this ever has to happen again. But they did say that this was a rare occurrence. Chris, that is a recap of everything that has unfolded for today. We are live in Springfield. James Villalobos, Western Mass News. Western Mass News has been following the situation since that news broke. And we have another live report from James Villalobos now breaking down all these latest details. James. Well, Chris, like you said, we have been following this all day and it is thankfully a happy ending that we can report that Charlotte has been found safe and that one person is in custody. That person, 24 year old Miguel Rodriguez of Springfield. We know that he was taken into custody at gunpoint, according to the state police at press conference that they just had. Let's actually go ahead and show you video of the moment that family and friends actually learned that Charlotte was found safe. You can see them all gathered there. Of course, you can only imagine the relief that they felt after this and this all started at 1.30 when it was reported that she was possibly abducted by a car. There was surveillance video from a neighbor who lives across the street from her home who says that the video was recorded from yesterday, but police say that that video, the car in that video, is actually the same one that was involved in her abduction today, and that is the same car, that blue Honda Civic that the public was seeing all day, that police were putting out the image, blasting it everywhere to making sure that everyone can do their part to try and find Charlotte, and doing their part is exactly what the community did. That is something that the mayor and the police commissioner said during the press conference today that were it not for all the civilians coming forward, texting a tip, calling police, That's and in is. some cases, and actually what actually helped find her is that there were people following the car, the, sus the suspect's car. They took a picture of the license plate, and when they took a picture of that license plate, they were put it, able to match it to all these different systems in the city and, of course, the state as well. Again, Chris, this is a happy ending. You can imagine the relief that this family is feeling. You could see in the video when they found out the news that she's okay. So that's all that we know as of right now. That is a very brief recap. This is a story that we, of course, continue to follow into tomorrow. But for now, we are live in Springfield. James Villalobos, Western Mass News. Back to our team coverage of the Springfield child abduction. During a press conference yesterday, police credited civilians for their huge role in helping locate the suspect, 
saying they made it possible to have a license plate number to look out for. Truly making a difference. Thank you to everybody sharing our story here. And our Western Mass News reporter, James Villalobos, speaking exclusively with the couple that engaged in a high-speed chase with the suspect, working then with police to make sure these people did not get away. They're now sharing their story and the video of that chase only with Western Mass News. Social media played a huge role yesterday in trying to find 11-year-old Charlotte Mosia. Amanda Disley of Springfield tells me that she saw the post like this one on Facebook, but when she saw that she was kicking and screaming and was forced into the car, she knew she had to do something to help. She just never expected to be in the right place at the right time so that that could happen. Amanda Disley and her husband, Benny Correa, were just picking up dinner Wednesday night, all while reports spread of the abduction that happened on Amherst Street. They were at a stop sign on Arnold Avenue when... I said, yo, babe, that's that car. That's that car. I seen that car. You showed me that car. That's the car. To make sure they weren't mistaken, Amanda quickly pulled up a picture of the suspected car she saw on Facebook. That's when they took a right onto Boston Road and began to follow it. The car was dark, 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 dark. At least 5% tint. When I seen it, I knew it was the car. So I pulled up against it when I went, when I got up to Harvey Street and I flashed my high beams. The guy pulls up his hood and covers his face. Started to dart up Har um, Harvey Street and I darted right behind him. They're turning down streets trying to avoid me. In this exclusive video given to us by the couple, you can see that they follow behind him while on the phone with 911. So My I husband reversed, reversed on, on the, the main road. On, right onto the main road. We blocked him. Have to block him. He in. jumped over a curb and that's when the high beams flashed right into his driver and I saw his complete face. Um, he threw the hood back over his face and I saw someone in the back seat pushing someone down. And that's when we were like, it's him, it's him, it's him. It's him. No, this is a blue, no, this is a blue Honda Civic. And they're, they're doing 100 miles an hour right now. When he noticed that we were really chasing him when he did all the side streets, he just started blowing through every single red light. And my husband blew through every single red light with him. The couple not giving up and refused to let the suspect get away. He just blew through a red light. He's blowing through red lights. He's, blow, he's blowing through red lights. Amanda and Benny never expecting to be in that position with their own five kids in the car, but they knew that in the one they were chasing, it was possibly life or death for another child. I feel relieved that we didn't chase the wrong person, and I feel relieved that my husband stepped up and that we got the plates because the plates led to them finding him on the highway because there was no notice of any plates. The two praised police for their response because as they were chasing the suspect, they ran out of gas and their car took a beating, now dealing with damage they were never anticipating. We blew our suspension. Our I tire. Hey, I hit some dirt. I, I almost killed me and my kids because I jumped in front of cars and blew through red lights and yeah, we but ate a lot of dirt, as I wasn't, you can see. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about that. I, 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 I played it safe. I looked both ways before I crossed the street. I made sure there was no cars coming before I ate the red, and I was on them. Hours later, and still trying to process what they just did has been difficult, they say. But they tell Western Mass News it's exactly what they hope anyone would have done when a child's life is at stake. Even it takes a village. It, it's, a, it's a city. It's our city. We don't do that stuff around here. That's not how we play. That's not, that's, 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 unto there's zero tolerance for that. While yes, their car is now damaged, they say that's nothing considering the role they played in making sure 11 year old Charlotte is back home with her family safe. There's still good people in the world. Not all people are bad. Just play it safe and make sure you watch yourself at all times. The world is not what it used to be. James Villalobos, Western Mass News. We're now hearing from the neighbors who provided police a critical piece of evidence in connection to the abduction of 11-year-old Charlotte Mosia Wednesday afternoon. A Western Masters reporter, James Villalobos, sat down with those neighbors tonight, and he joins us now with more. James. Chris, you can only imagine how stressful Wednesday was for everyone that lives on that street. But tonight, they are relieved and want everyone to know that this was truly a community effort that brought Charlotte back home safe. Julius and Maggie Kenny have called the Hill McKnight neighborhood home for 33 years. That's why when they heard screaming Wednesday afternoon, they knew something was wrong. I start screaming and I'm telling my husband, call the cops. Hey, put her out, put her down. And she was screaming and he just threw her back in the back seat and got in the car and they took off. Julius immediately contacting police with officers arriving within minutes, a sight that made Charlotte's dad feel uneasy. 
he got out and he's looked and he wanted to know what was going on and they said go in the house and check and see if your daughter's in there. He went in and checked, come out screaming, throw the phone down, the glasses, and so I ran across the street and grabbed him. He, and he got mad. He said, Julius, why you didn't call? I said, look, this is a, a situation I had to call the cops, Carl. I didn't want to call you and frighten you and Denise. The investigation at this point well underway, as seen in this video provided to us by neighbor Shelly Hill. I'd seen that the police were over at my neighbor's house, and I said, well, I have cameras. And I ran straight over to them and said, um, we have surveillance cameras. Let, let's go see what happened. Shelly tells Western Mass News that Charlotte's mom needed to know what was happening. I knew how to contact my neighbor, and um, she called me right back. That, that was hard. Um, I just quickly asked her, where's Elizabeth, where's Charlotte, and found out Charlotte was supposed to be home. And um, dad was on his way because she hadn't called in. And um, I, I couldn't say anything at that point, but hand the phone to the detective because I, I, just, I just broke down. While that call took place, police worked with Shelly's son Joshua to track down a possible suspect. They didn't capture the actual abduction, but did capture the suspect parked and pulling away, noticing the same car was just there the day prior. That looks like the same car, and then when it came back, they were like, yep, same car. It's got to be the guy. We were just telling them, put it out there, put it out there, get it out there as fast as possible. Somebody's got to see the car. Somebody's got to see her. There was so much fear. Some of my friends actually got annoyed and said, why are you sending this to us? We live nowhere near you. And I said, I live right next to a bunch of entrances to the highway. Even though you live three states over, she could be there in a day or two. Yeah. Hours. While police and the public searched, the crowd at the Mosia home kept growing with the parents fearing the worst case scenario. She started making all these, you know, things. She could be killed, be thrown in the river, what have you. But then news broke that Charlotte was found. He's just kissing me all up under my... And I say, Carl, come on, come on. Now, now look, if your beard's a little rough. He just kissed me all over the face, under the neck, on the head. She come over and start hugging me. Cause I said, I told you the Lord got it. And I just asked Jesus to bring her back safe and sound. And he did. Remember, Benny and Amanda, the couple who chased the suspect with their five kids in their car, some are now criticizing their actions, but neighbors telling those critics simply, knock it off. Then we're not going to have any more heroes. We're not going to have any more angels out there. That was, that was a child who was being threatened with a knife for her life. That, that was a little girl that might not have ever seen her mom and dad again. And Benny and Amanda knew what they had to do, they knew it inside of them, that they had to follow that car and do everything that they could to stop that little girl from being abducted. And if they hadn't have done that, the police wouldn't have had as much information as they, as they had and what they needed. The neighbors have been giving the Mosia family space as they process everything that just happened. But they tell me that they look forward to the day that they can meet Amanda and Benny and thank them for saving Charlotte's life. James Villalobos, Western Mass News. Hey, James. Coming together after saving a little girl who'd been kidnapped. Tonight, the neighbors of last week's kidnapped victim and the couple who chased the suspect's car meet for the very first time. That after a request to Western Mass News reporter James Villalobos, who made the gathering possible. And he joins us now live after speaking with the two groups about why it was so important for them to meet, James? Well, Chris, you may remember that on Friday night, we introduced to you the neighbors that played a crucial role in the investigation following that abduction that happened one week ago today. They saw the videos that Amanda Disley and her husband, Benny, filmed chasing the suspect's car, and they wanted to make sure they knew how grateful the neighbors were for saving the young victim's life. This is new exclusive video you'll only see on Western Mass News as the kidnapping happened. Listen closely. Those were the desperate screams of that 11-year-old victim. Followed by screaming from the Kenny family, the victim's neighbors. This was the first piece of the puzzle in helping to find that little girl. Hi, we want to hug you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. On Wednesday night, all of the neighbors and the couple... I seen you on the news. <laughs> 
meeting for the very first time. Thankful this abduction had a happy ending. So many times you see those things and it's like, okay, well, where are they? What am I supposed to do? You just look. You just start looking and, and looking for the little girl and looking for the car and, and saying, you know, if I can help, I'll help. And just loving one another as a community. And I, I, again, I love what Benny said. Yeah. Say it again. Not, not here. Not here. <laughs> not here. We're not letting that happen yeah. here. While Amanda and Benny have received a lot of praise, they credit the Hill family for quickly getting pictures of the car out online. All Facebook was that little girl, all of it. And it was all your pictures, and he was well, like, it worked. It, it worked. <laughs> yes, it worked. And amidst the laughs, a consensus from everyone in the room agreeing that each person played their own significant role. They're my heroes. <laughs> like, everyone's on Facebook saying Amanda and Benny, and I'm like, this would have never happened without her quick. Her saying, I got surveillance. <laughs> This is a blue, no, this is a blue Honda Civic. As the victim's family continues to grieve, the neighbors say they can't express their gratitude enough. They were so thankful to you when they found out what you were doing for their little girl and that and that you weren't giving up and that you were just trying to trying to keep their you baby girl safe. To me, they was thinking about their kids. You know what I'm saying? And they never stopped. They are my heroes. They constantly replace. Sleepless nights sometimes, you know, tossing, yeah. turning. You mm -hmm. never know. I, I have my little ones, and if that was one of mine, there's no telling how far I would yeah. have to do what yeah. I was going to do or whatever I had to get mm -hmm. to do to yes. get to my kids. Complete strangers coming together as a community, hoping that it's something Springfield will see more of. What's coming of all this, do you think? Well, I want to go to some barbecues. <laughs> <laughs> I like to eat. <laughs> Now, at the end of the interview, the Hill family gave Amanda and Benny soup and fruit for her kids that have been sick the last few days. The mom, Shelly, telling them it's important that it's the least they can do for saving their young neighbor's life. Most importantly, she did the gesture to say that as members of this community, everyone just needs to look out for each other's kids because at the end of the day, it takes a village. James Villalobos, Western Mass News.